The PE ratio is one of, if not the most often used valuation metrics. In this video, I'm going to tell you what the PE ratio is and how to calculate it, its significance to investors, and why you want to take PE ratios with just a grain of salt. Hi, my name is Devroy Davis and welcome back to my YouTube channel. The price to earnings ratio or PE ratio for short is a term that investors will often come across when reading about stocks. It is a relative valuation metric that investors use to gauge whether a stock is overvalued, fairly valued or undervalued. We'll talk a little bit more about this later on in the video. For now, let's look at how the P-E ratio is calculated. The P-E ratio is calculated by dividing a company's stock price by its earnings per share or its EPS. The EPS can be found on the income statement of the company's audited financial statements. It's important to know that when calculating the P-E ratio of a stock, we are supposed to use the audited financial statements since that shows the complete or the total year of earnings for that company. It would be a mistake to use quarterly earnings in terms of calculating a PE ratio. The earnings per share or EPS can be found on the company's income statement in either its audited financial statements or its annual report or 10K. If it is not there, and it often is, you can calculate a company's earnings per share by taking the total net income for the full year of operations and dividing it by the total number of outstanding shares that were in issue for that period. Now that might sound a bit complicated, so let's look at a few examples. I'm going to use two companies to demonstrate how it is we can find or calculate the earnings per share for a company and subsequently the P.E. ratio. Another thing to note is that there are two different types of P.E. ratios. One is called the trailing P.E. ratio and the other is called the forward P.E. ratio. It's important to note when dealing with P.E. ratios whether you are looking at the forward P.E. ratio or the trailing 12 months PE ratio. All right, so here we have Apple Inc's 10K or their annual report for the period ended September 28th, 2019. Remember, I said earlier that when we use the annual reports, what we're looking for is the earnings per share number and that would be found in the income statement which is going to be among the audited financial statements so i'm going to scroll down through this document in order to try and locate the financial statements from the contents from the table of contents we see where item 8 consists of the financial statements and supplementary data. So let's click on that. It takes us to page 31. And here we're seeing all of Apple's financial statements. So we have the consolidated statements of operations for the year ended September 28, 2019, along with the preceding two years. We also have the consolidated statement of comprehensive income for the same three years, as well as the consolidated balance sheets as at September 28, 2019 and September 29, 2018. Okay, so let's look at these two financial statements. Let's first look at the consolidated statement of operations for the year ended September 28, 2019. Here we can see that Apple actually reflected total sales of 
and 60 billion dollars now this is 260 billion because this number is actually quoted in millions and please take special note of this the numbers are stated in millions except for the number of shares which are reflected in thousands and the per share amounts so we're going to scroll down to find apple's net income so here we can see that the net income was 55 billion 256 million dollars notice also that we're given the earnings per share so for apple we see that in 2019 the earnings per share was eleven dollars and 97 cents and that was a basic earnings now the diluted earnings is what the earnings per share would be if we took into consideration convertible debt as well as options or any other form of shares that are not accounted for. here they actually show us that the shares used in computing the earnings per share are as follows so there were 4.617 billion shares that were used to calculate the earnings per share and we can actually run that calculation to verify this number so remember the earnings per share is calculated by taking the net income in this case it is 55 billion 256 million dollars and we're dividing that through by the total amount of shares in issue which is 4 billion 617 million 834 thousand and if we run that calculation here you can see where we get back the exact number 11.97 for the earnings per share we can also verify this diluted earnings per share number and we would do that by dividing the 55 billion 256 million dollars of net income by the 4.648 billion shares that apple had in issue at the end of that period so let's put in those numbers and we're dividing that number by 4 billion 648 million 913 thousand and here you can see that we've indeed get 11.89 dollars per share let us calculate apple's pe ratio so what i'm going to do is i'm going to find apple's latest share price and i'm going to be dividing that by the earnings per share in this case we'll be calculating the trailing pe ratio i'm going to take apple's last stock price last quoted stock price and divide that by its earnings per share to get Apple's stock price, we simply have to go to Google and type in the symbol AAPL. We see here that Apple's stock price closed at $313.14. Next, we're going to divide the stock price 313.14 by its earnings per share, which was 11.97 11.97 and we see here that apple is currently trading at a pe ratio of 26.16 times earnings in the next part of the video we will talk about what this number actually means but for now let's look at another example using a company on the jamaica stock exchange Oh, 
and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more educational content on investing, personal finance, and financial literacy. My name is Devroid Davis, wishing you all the best.